back in 2021, a woman named Ruth called from Chicago and she called to talk about her, her daughter had received a schizophrenia diagnosis and she was calling to ask about what she, what should she do? What, what happens next? And she has a follow-up call here. Ruth, are you there? Yes, sir. Okay. Every time I get a follow-up call, I always, <laughs> they don't tell me what the follow-up call is. And so you could be oh, calling hi. to be like, oh, by the way, you t- completely screwed this up. My whole, fa- like whatever. Or it could be nope, really positive. So tell me, um, tell me uh, what's going on. Okay. Well, I, I was meaning to write you for a couple of months now, and I just finally decided that I needed to write that letter and give you an update. Um, your advice, because our, our specific question was that she wanted to share her struggles and her possible diagnosis with her friends and, and kind of live more openly with us. She was feeling very alone. And um, her dad, my husband, and I were really fearful about kind of the exposure that that would give her, um, especially since the diagnosis wasn't formalized yet. And um, so your advice was to to kind of work around that and, and give her some more trusted adults at school to talk to mm. and um, some some escape routes if things were bad at school. So we did that. Um, she had, we called it the golden ticket and she could leave class if she needed to. Mm. Um, she never even used it, but like having that ability to escape was kind of comforting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, did, and, I, did and we I, talked to her I, counselor I, and we brought them in on it. If I remember, um, did y'all go get some more, some additional medical testing? Um, she'd been doing medical tests for over a year, basically, okay, when we okay, talked. Okay. Um, and we had, you know, all of it laid out in front of us. Blood work and MRIs and EEGs and PET scans and the right. whole thing. And schizophrenia is, is a diagnosis of, of exclusion. You know, you right. check everything else and then maybe that's what you're left with. Um, and that's what we were really close to. And um, like teenagers do sometimes, we made a plan and then she just did something else. Uh, <laughs> she went and told some friends of hers. Um, and I found out about it. She kept it from us. Um, and it was a huge fight. Um, not my most composed moment as a parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was, it was really rough and I felt very scared for her and it came out as anger and that was bad. Can, um, can I, hold on one second. Um, <laughs> can I give you some peace there? Mm-hmm. You just said that better than I've heard it articulated by almost anyone I've ever talked to. Okay. Thanks. You were scared for your daughter and it came out as anger. For sure. Have you told her since then that you're sorry? Oh, yeah. 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 We, so, we, we picked ourselves up and we dusted each other off and we went back at it. Um, so I, I, and, never, I never want you to beat yourself up. I can hear it on you. Um, it makes perfect sense that a child wanted to reach out to some of their peers and say, hey, um, I'm unique, but I'm also just like y'all. And yeah. so that doesn't surprise me in the least. And wanting you you to really protect your daughter, and we don't know what this is like, and it's unknown, and let's just be safe, stay close to the cave. That makes sense too, right? And yeah. so, yeah, you probably said some things and yelled and screamed and kicked and whatever. Oh. Like, I, 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 and again, hopefully you didn't kick anybody, but um, yeah. you got mad, and then you said, I'm sorry. And I think that's a that's a beautiful wave in your relationship. So good for you. I want you to set that brick down though, man. Okay. Thank you. Um, so there is also other good news. Um, we were, the doctor we ended up with had all this laid out in front of him. He was a neuropsychologist and he said, medically, the only thing that we're left with is schizophrenia. He said, but I'm just not comfortable with it. He says it doesn't match enough. Hmm. She's not experiencing any of the other things that should be affecting her life and her schoolwork and her relationships. Um, and he sent us to one more guy and um, a pediatric neurologist who ran a test we'd already had, but he ran it again and he found something small that doesn't usually have a lot of symptoms with it. He said, try this medication and we fiddled with medication for a while and she is no longer being bothered by her symptoms at all. And I'm really, really grateful for those doctors. So was she having hallucinations and ex- nope. like what, what was she having? Uh, she was solely having visual hallucinations. Okay, oh, that's that's uh, just saying, like, auditory. Okay, so nothing. no no voices, just seeing. Yep. Okay, so a distortion of her visual field, and yep. they didn't give up. And I don't say nope. a, a, a schizophrenic diagnosis isn't, isn't medical professionals giving up, but your doctor didn't take the easy route. Didn't just do fifteen minutes of okay, it looks like this. Here's some medication for the rest of your life. 
They said, I want to keep digging because something doesn't add up. Good for you. Good for your doctors. That makes me, that gives me, that restores my faith in the whole system, man. That's so good. Well, and and I wanted to to kick that back to you because you had told me the same thing. You know, just keep asking, keep fighting. Um, This may be where you end up, but it doesn't have to be. And and you can keep working for that. So it was nice to have a little backup. And what what a blessing. I know people... um, really thumb their nose at medication what an incredible gift and yes we are people are way over medicated all the blah 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 but what an incredible gift that we live in a sliver of history where there is a medication for this particular thing yeah. right that gives you your daughter her life back that's amazing so good yeah well it dude was, it was really important for me to, to kind of just focus on the positive for a couple of minutes yeah. and write that letter to you it's it's been really bad at our house on some other fronts. So I wanted to, to be grateful for that. Well, Um, thank you. Thank you. So they said you have another question. Um, I don't, I don't know if it's really a question. I just, um, the reason it's been so bad. And the reason I was up late at night writing this letter, um, is that my husband was killed in a car accident two months ago. Oh, good (laughs) God, Ruth. Yeah. So um, what happened? Single vehicle, no faults. Lost control of the vehicle on his way home from work. I'm so sorry. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I don't know that there's a question that encapsulates that. Um, you don't need to ask a question every day. And just we, know I'm we sitting try with to you. Do the next thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's. Ex- I mean, what else are you going to do, right? Nothing. I'd- what was his name? You don't have to say it. That's okay. Will you tell me something great about him? Um, he was just, he was so much more than the breadwinner. He was the sole income for the house. And so that's really scary to face going forward, mm-hmm. but it's all of the other things because everything is so much quieter. He was, the one who made us laugh and he was the one who told us it would be okay when it, and we believed him and he was the one who fixed everything when it was broken. So it's just really different. I have um, five children, 17 down to to seven. So it's, it's really bizarre for me to try to navigate just myself, but I'm also navigating for five other people to, you know, try to help them process that. And it's, it's a lot, but I don't know that there's a lot of processing that you can help with. Yeah. I want you to relieve yourself of that. That's a heavy, heavy burden. Right. Um, your focus is being with, Mm Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I know it's easy for you as as a parent of five kids to get caught up in just the, I got to put that away because these kids got to eat and these kids got to get to school and these kids got to keep that air conditioner running and the heater going or whatever. (laughs) Um, But if you haven't honor him, honor yourself and honor your kids by letting them see you hurt too. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying. And that, that has certainly happened. (laughs) Okay. Um, Are you, are you back or is this still a fuzzy foggy dream and you roll over and he's still there, but he's not. No, it's, it's horribly real. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Who's walking with you during this season? Um, we have some good, um, good support from our extended family and from our church family and and a lot of people looking out for us in a lot of ways. And we're just, everybody takes a piece of the puzzle and hopefully it, it comes together somehow. That's a very evasive answer. (laughs) Do you, let me ask you this way. And and, and I want to protect you. I know, I I know, I know, I know. know. (laughs) Do you have two or three or four women that you can text and call 24 hours a day, 365 days a year and say, I need you to come get his shoes out of the house. I need you to come over to my house right now because I just need someone to hold my hand and lay here by me. Yeah. 
You have that? Okay, good. Do you promise that you'll you'll lean on them? Yes. Okay. I'm going to tell you something hard to hear. Okay. Yeah. Um, this will get heavier before it gets lighter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's this sense that we're over the hump. This is the way this is. And then we're just going to plow through what comes next. And this, it ha- comes in waves. Mm. Okay. And there's not any, contrary to popular belief, there's not a lot you can do to fortify yourself for the big wave, right? Mm. What you can do is surround yourself with people who will hold your arms up and hold you above water when they hit. Mm-hmm. And they will hit. Okay. And I'm not telling you that to be, to be a jerk. I'm telling that because I love you. <laughs> I know. Okay. No, it just is. Um, so yeah. It, I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Thank you. And for what it's worth, one of those nights where I stood there and just stared at the ceiling and said, I can't do this. I just decided to write about something good that turned out right. So that's where it got us here. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, thank you for honoring me, um, by telling your story and thank you for honoring your husband. Sounds like he's an amazing guy. Um, yeah honoring his story say say a couple of those things so i'm thinking about just a dad driving home from work today mm-hmm. um who's kind of like Ugh. is suddenly going to be snapped back into reality that they've actually have the privilege to drive home today what are what are some things that your husband brought to you, you sound like he brought light and he brought joy and he brought laughter what are some give me two or three things that he brought to your home that you you want to communicate to other knuckleheaded guys out there driving home with their dead eyed, loosened tie around their neck. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Thank God, because otherwise I would be in a mess. I would be in a mess. <laughs> Almost out of the back of our head sometimes. Can I tell you this too? Uh, if no one's told you this, there's going to come a moment if it hasn't happened already when you're going to laugh really, really hard about something and then you're going to feel guilty about it. You're going to have a good morning when you get the kids all off to school and nobody breaks down and even some of the younger ones help with the other kids' lunches and it just kind of happens. And all of a sudden, you're going to realize that this is life moving forward. And then you're going to feel guilty and you're going to feel sick about moving forward. And I want you to know that that's a normal part of the process and you're not screwed up and you're not broken. And... It's okay to feel joy again, and it's okay to laugh again, and it's okay to be laughing and then all of a sudden start crying all at the same time, and it's it's okay to have a bunch of people over, and then five minutes in, you're like, everybody out, everybody out, not today. All that's okay. Hmm, so good. So good. And then, hey, once a month, ride them again. Yes! Golly. Yes, 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 yes. Do you have a a group? Have you sat down with a group of, do you meet with anybody who has lost people? Lost somebody? You're amazing, Ruth. If I can help you in any way along the journey, let me know, okay? Uh, I'm going to send you, stay on the line, and I'm going to send you every single deck of questions for humans I got about families and kids and all that. So that way, when it gets quiet in the house, some there's always going to be a deck laying around that you can pull up and be like, all right, and you can pull something up, okay? That's I, I don't know if it's going to help at all. It's, uh, I'm just trying to think of something I can I can leave you with, uh, add a little bit of joy into, into your home. But it's going to be a shadow. 
I mean, yeah, that's kind of cr that's creepy on top of weird. You sh <laughs> you should put a sign at your front door that's like, "I like your food. Please don't break in. I'll kill you." That'd probably be good. <laughs> that that's a perfect example of, gosh. Sometimes men try to help, and what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> wow. It is, but it's super not. Don't break into some... Oh, golly. Oh, man. Hey, we love you, Ruth, and anything we can do, um, please don't hesitate to let us know. Whew. I'm sorry. I'm heartbroken with you. And... That's all I'm going to say.